Hey guys, good morning, Mehdi. How are you doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining and thanks for taking the time. Our audience is super thrilled to get to know that there is somebody who's an expert or was an OG or an early adopter of NFTs and they want to know about NFTs. This has been this has been a topic of discussion for with our audience for the last few days. All all our audience want to know more and more about NFTs. It's a very exciting space in which we are in. and you being one of the one of the early adopters early enthusiasts in nft no better than you to tell us so welcome to the show let's start with the introduction about yourself in your own words please go ahead awesome yeah look my name is mary and i i have been an early investor in the nft space and i bought some cryptocurrency in 2017 and i remember going to in 2018 looking for other investment opportunities and i saw you know you can buy virtual land and virtual images and things and back then i didn't know that there were nfts so i started to buy and trade and get involved in the community since 2018 and now it's been 3 years and obviously nfts have gone on to become you know music art game items virtual land all kinds of things so i'm very excited about the space and i cover this space on my blog my my youtube my twitter and i just be involved with the growth of the space Thank you. We will make sure that all your blogs and twitters, etc., we we get our audience covered. We give you all the links there. That's lovely. So, what is NFTs? How do you pronounce them? What the <laughs> hell is going on? Please. Yeah, I will try my best to answer. NFTs are uh, what is called non fungible token, and cryptocurrencies are actually fungible tokens. right the difference between these two terminology is the the economic description of what it means to be fungible so fungible is a name that we give to things that you can trade amongst each other which have the same value so if i give you uh, 1 rupee you can give me another rupee uh, whether that's ripped up in half or whether it's full it has the same value so that's called fungible right the the money no matter what it is it is a fungible thing but non fungible items are things like cars you know you can give me a car i, I can't just simply give you a toyota and you give me a toyota i can't just simply give you that another toyota because it has different miles it has different wear and tear it has different conditions so these are these items are called non fungible so what's happened now in the blockchain world in the crypto space for the last 10 years fungible tokens have existed these are bitcoin this is ethereum this is matic this is all the cryptocurrencies you know and uh, are familiar with now this new thing called non fungible token has come up where each token can represent a different item and it can connect to a digital item so initially it used to be virtual land it used to be virtual collectible items so if you own the virtual land token then suddenly in in decentraland which is a virtual world you can go in there and you can build whatever you want on your virtual land based on which maybe it's position 00 maybe it's position 150 150 you know the coordinates will change that's why it's non fungible but an nft can really represent a non fungible token is basically like if you own the token then you have ownership of that item that digital item a virtual land it can be an art piece so you own you own the collector piece from that artist so that artist makes a digital drawing and he says okay i'm going to release only one nft that represents this to- this art piece you as a collector can buy that token and so you can have something official from the artist now in the digital world so this is something that was not available obviously you can print screen the image you can save the image you can download the file but there's no collector relationship that comes from that the non fungible token has unlocked that ability so in the traditional world you know we buy the painting we keep it you know people take pictures of it they do whatever they want but you have the original piece right you have the certificate of authenticity you have the original piece in the digital world you have the token the token represents the digital piece people can print screen it just like they can in the physical world but yeah the token now is the nft world has now popped up all these things we can make into digital collector items from tweets to uh, you know virtual land and game items even skins and things like that will become non fungible tokens and it's just a very fun space to be part of yeah that's that's one of the best explanations we've got you've explained what this word means and also explained how does this have relevance so why why should we care about nfts while there is a lot of hype or there is a lot of news around it and it's getting bought and sold and significant amount of value is being spent there but why should you and i or, or our audience normal we will care about it mm-hmm. So the financial value is there because suddenly what this token allows you to do is it financializes this relationship. 
So from an artist, you can own something. You can't sell an image, right? But you can sell a token because there's other collectors that want that relationship. They want that token that represents that art piece. From a financial perspective, it's exciting for investors, etc. But from a technological perspective, from an innovation perspective, it is even more exciting because what an NFT does, and this is where you need to know a little bit of blockchain and, and hopefully whoever's listening to this, you will experiment a little bit. But mm -hmm. basically you can own a digital wallet and in that digital wallet that's connected to your, your internet browser, that holds your NFTs, that holds your cryptocurrencies. So when you go to a project like Decentraland, the Decentraland will pick up all your NFTs and say, all right, well, this NFT that you own in our world, that is a land, right? Then you can take it to another website and then that will pick it up and say, okay, well, that same NFT in our game is a sword. So suddenly that one NFT token can have multiple use cases and multiple games can give value to that token. And suddenly you have that one token that represents multiple things from art to game items, maybe a skin in one game, maybe a sword, maybe a shield in a different game, a pet. So, you know, this interoperability, it's called interoperability where you can take that token to anything that accepts a digital wallet and that token will give you different things. For example, there was a very famous artist called Justin Blau who released 50 art pieces, mm -hmm. maybe last year sometime. And if you owned any of those art pieces as an NFT token, you can take that token to a club in Decentraland and you can enter the club. So that, that door will only open if you have that token in your digital wallet. Then you go in that club, that club will only play music that Justin Blau has not released yet. So it's a special perk from a collector. So, you know, you are a collector and the reward for being a collector is the art piece, but he's, al he's also built in a club where you can go in and you can listen to his unreleased music. So it's a special way for, you know, artists or game developers to provide value to their community through these tokens. So I think from a technological perspective and what this is going to do to the game industry and the art industry and the insurance and the financial industry, it's going to make big things and, and really open up the doors for innovation. Very interesting. Very interesting. What should we watch out for? What should we look out for if if we want to collect, if you want to keep an eye on, if you want to invest in? What what should we look out for and where should we look out for? Yeah, I think this is the biggest question because the industry is so new and it's accelerated so fast that the news and the information is very difficult to navigate yourself. And, uh, you know, I've been here for three years and even I am struggling at this point to keep my tabs on things. And the only, the only substitute is to really surround yourself with the NFT community. You know, I'm very active on Twitter. I'm very active on YouTube. You can join my channels. I try and cover the space virtual land to art and as there's other people that do podcasts and things like that and when you join discords you join like the chat groups you will see like people talking about nfts but you know the nft industry is unlocking basically everything in the physical world is now going digital in terms of ownership so asking and and trying to keep tabs and trying to keep on top of everything in the real world from art to pokemon cards to you know physical collectibles you know there's hundreds you know, of vintage cars it's very difficult to do that right there's so many collector niches so many industries so when you go into the nft world a similar thing is happening now so you will probably find maybe there's a certain artist that you will start to like maybe there's a certain collecting game that you will start to like so i would say spend a few months just to familiarize with what's happening and things will start to make sense you will absorb that but this is, very, this is a thing that is very deep and there's no substitute for you to spend a long time to learn this. So, you know, whether it be a couple of weeks or a month or two, take some time mm -hmm. to absorb it all. And then from there, you uh, make better decisions. Yeah. Are you, are you a collector in the, in, the, in the physical world as well? No, not at all. I'm an investor. I'm almost purely an investor, but I've fallen in love with digital collecting as well, because through that, you can support the artists, you can help inject capital into them and then you can you know that also is an asset that appreciates in value so it's yeah. a very good hobby <laughs> in the space yeah and and for our viewers we, we get this okay a lot a lot of our our users are art are artists we I, we've got this a lot that they they are artists they can create digital art what should they do they want to try mm -hmm. this out they want to see if they can be the next people what, what should they do I think, you know, we're all still figuring this out. It's so yeah. new. There's no, there's no like information on this, right? So everyone's experimenting and learning, oh, you know, you can do this and it will work or you can do that and it will work. 
I've been an investor for a long time in, in art, maybe six to eight months, which is actually not a very long time compared to people being here for three years in the art world specifically. But I think we are going in the age of digital where, where it matters a lot, whether you have an Instagram account, it matters a lot, whether you have a Twitter account. I think if you're an, an artist, you should continue to grow these social platforms. You should continue to grow your network and your relationships with potential collectors. And once NFT platforms become available to you, which they are, you can try OpenSea. You can try Rarible where you can mint your art. You can make your image into a, a token. Um, you can do that and then try and post it onto your Instagram and try and get some collectors. If you're a good artist, maybe people will just find it on Rarible and buy your art. The only problem is that to make your art into a token, it's very costly. Sometimes it costs $50 to $200 to just do that. So that's one of the biggest hurdles in the air, in the space right now which will probably be gone away in the next three to six months. But if you are still open to experiment and try a lot of people in the Philippines and in India, and no matter what country you are from, they're minting art. Some of them are finding a lot of success. You don't have to make millions, but many people are making thousands of dollars, which is a lot mm -hmm. of money, tens of thousands. And that's allowing them to experiment and even become investors. So there's, there's artists that started off selling art. And now they become collectors as well. So they've got so much money and now they become, okay, maybe I'll also start collecting because also that goes up in value. So experiment, uh, try OpenSea, try Rarible and uh, grow your social platforms and your, your relationships. Very nice. Thanks. That was, that was actually a good, good comprehensive view of where we are and how it is evolving. In your opinion, is it just because we have seen most of the arts, digital art, it's like if I create a digital art and somebody buys it, but do you see a potential here for, for a lot of other dig digital content being tokenized? Yeah. Anything and everything in the digital world can be tokenized. I can make a token that represents a tweet or a, a TikTok video. You know, you can imagine how many famous memes and TikTok videos and songs like people, maybe there'll be a movie that will release each scene as a token, right? So you can own wow. a special token for the matrix scene. You can imagine, you know, how yeah, much someone would... That'd be cool, yeah? Like if Shah Rukh Khan oh, comes in a movie, he's got a special scene, maybe you can buy his token directly from Shah Rukh Khan or Salman Khan or something. So yeah, this, yeah, I think, you know, yeah. in the future, this will, this is what's happening is that this NFT is unlocking the collector relationship with everything digital now. In entertainment, it's a big deal, but even financially, people have sold insurance policies as NFTs. So if you own the NFT, you own the insurance policy to whatever is happening here. And you can take that insurance policy token into the platform and it, it, it will read and register that you own the insurance for whatever you are insuring. So there is so many tangents this will take, but uh, yeah, in entertainment and all that is very exciting. Wow. Very nice. Give us, give us some predictions for future from your side. What do you, it's very evolving space, but we want to hear from you in a crystal ball. What do you see coming? <laughs> So I, I'm, I'm very involved in the space. I know most of the investors, the artists and the founders, and I've been involved for a long time. So I'm always in conversation as to what's coming up. I know that gaming will start to take center stage in the next year or two. Gaming, music, NFTs will start to, you know, we will see more of this. We will definitely see a lot more celebrities like Snoop Dogg is doing a, a drop. I'm sure that, you know, Beyonce at some stage or maybe Jay-Z or some really, Justin Bieber will do some drops as NFTs. It's, it's going to go global. There's so much money here that you can't ignore it, you know? And it's, it's one of those things that artists can communicate directly with their fans. So they don't even need these labels in between. They can just say, Hey, you know, I already have an Instagram following. I'm just going to make NFTs and sell them to my collector base. Why do I need to sell music through these labels that will manage my brand for me? I can do this directly. So it's doing that. So I think in the future, yeah, we're going to see this whole concept of metaverse. So the metaverse is basically like virtual living. So putting on your VR glasses and living in the space where you are in this new virtual world and you are going to roller coaster ride with your friends from Argentina to Australia to India, you know, this will close barriers. You maybe you're working in the virtual world. I think this will start to become a reality in the next two to three years when NFTs will become, you know, you can own your name, your clothes, your car, your land, everything will become an NFT in the virtual world. And you can take that across, you know, all these spaces. I think that will take maybe one or two years. We will start to see gaming because gaming takes three to five years to start to build a proper game and, and structurally build out the development and all that and market it and gain followers. So that has been going on for two, three years now. And I think they will reach maturity in the next three, uh, two years. So between three and five years. So my prediction is gaming will start to take 
a big part of this uh, space gaming and in virtual worlds. Do you think, I mean, we see Elon Musk selling, getting into NFTs. He starts with Dogecoin and goes into Bitcoin and then talks about NFTs these days. So there's so much, so much conversation about that. But, but do you see that he talking more and more about NFTs and making it some kind of a world around that? That means we will follow him yeah. or not. Yeah. These, these tech entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, they know, and Mark Cuban, you know, like a Gary Vee, these guys, they know how to experiment with the technology to a level that gives them information. It might seem like they're just playing around, but they're not, they're experimenting. And through that experimentation comes the thinking about how they can involve this into their strategy. So I'm sure, you know, like all this social following and all the buzz that comes with it, what is actually being done here, how much money is being, you know, someone would pay millions of dollars for that NFT from Elon Musk. Yeah. That's a lot of money. So a lot of money. It's a lot of money, right? So people will definitely figure out how to incorporate this into their technology. Same like how Elon Musk did with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin has a lot of investors now. These investors would want to spend that Bitcoin at some stage. So why not allow Bitcoin payments in Tesla? And why not also be invested in Bitcoin? It was a very genius move from Elon Musk, even though at the start he was just playing around and, and talking, you know, anything he wanted about Bitcoin. But you know, these, these guys are smart. I think they will integrate NFTs or blockchain in their, in their projects somehow. Very interesting. It's such fast pace and such interesting space that it just gives you a chill down your spine that we we are in those times that new world and new future is getting created. And we are right there in the thick of it. Yeah. Well, one question, while it is, I kind of uh, know what where we will, we will lead you to, but how techy a person has to be to get involved in the NFT space? I think... In a space so big, it comes with a lot of learning. It's kind of like trying to learn the internet in 1995, 1990. You know, what is this button? How do you attach this email? What do you, what is an email? You know, like there's so many missing parts that you need to fill the gaps in. I think you don't need to be too techy, but I think you need to be able to absorb information and spend some money to learn the technology or spend some time to learn the technology. I'm not a techie person at all. I've learned this only, I, I wasn't, I didn't even know I was selling or buying and selling NFTs for a whole year, right? For me, it was just virtual land. I was buying and selling virtual land and people can buy and, and build on that virtual land. And I'm not a dev. I, I don't know how to build anything, but I understand business. So I understand how gamer? to buy and sell. I think there's, sorry. Are you a gamer? I used to play some games a lot back in the day, but uh, not much now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But. I think there are some technical hurdles, like understanding what is a MetaMask, what is this digital wallet, what is this gas fees, what is Ethereum? And as you play around with that, maybe one or two weeks, three weeks, it'll take you some time to absorb that all and it'll make some sense. But I think anyone can do this, anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's, it's still nascent. It is still, it's still new, still a lot of technology, still the gas fees is high. The, the the talk of the year actually. So it's still $50 to mint that token. So, but it's exciting. It's the future. So, and if you learn now, you will be ahead in the race, right? So you would be two years ahead than whoever comes in. And I think that like some of the big names you mentioned, once they start coming in, it cannot be ignored. It cannot be ignored. I mean, I don't know. It'd be lovely to see to own, I don't know, but it'll be lovely to own some, some IPL moments, right? If you will, those are digital moments, right? So these days, those so are I'll digital. tell you some interesting information. The ICC is looking into NFTs. Oh, very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. We will keep an eye on that. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that and it'll be, it'll be lovely. We, we are a nation of uh, cricket. Yeah. We're actually a nation of uh, cricket lovers. So yeah, for sure. I also think that it's, it actually can be an interesting one. You, these, all these memes, which actually get viral, okay, mm. that, that once you turn into NFTs, there can be a significant amount of value, which you can drive back to the meme creator, right? Mm -hmm. the, uh, what, what do you, do you see, and we had this conversation with another NFT uh, enthusiast uh, a couple of weeks back, but how do you see fractional ownership? of digital art of being uh, combined with NFT tokens. What do you, mm -hmm. what do you I like it. see the space? No, I like it. I like it. I think we can do so much with that, with that stuff. You know, you can, in time, these 
these NFTs will, if this is an industry that will go on for decades, then this early art pieces, they will be worth millions and millions of dollars, right? But maybe others will want to invest in them. So if I am a big believer in fractionalizing uh, art or collectibles, the early ones, because what you can do is, you know, people can own those fractions as, you know, the, like how people did the B20 token. So if you own the B20 cryptocurrency token, then you own a fraction of the people set from MetaCoven. And what he can do if he wants to, is he can say, okay, well, I'm going to make a big B20 museum, a big people museum in Decentraland. And only if you own 100 cryptocurrency tokens of the B20 token, then you will have access to that place. If you own 10,000 of those, then you will have access to a Beeple VIP session where once a week we get people to come and do a talk. So, you know, you can do so much with that. And I, and I love that. I, I think that would be a big thing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, he can do B20, but he can't do B21 because we are doing B21. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> <laughs> no, it was it was interesting. We, we one of our one of my passionate project is B twenty one, and and somebody said, "Hey, what the hell is B 20 And I, what the hell is B twenty? And I had to look it up, and I was like, "Okay, fine, that's very interesting." So, mm. yeah, it's it's similar name, and it was very interesting to see that very close to B twenty one. So nice. That was just a fun conversation. Good. Well, thank you for your time. It was lovely. Uh, talking it was lovely to understand a bit more i'm not saying that we've we've got our we've got our heads wrapped around it we are still we are still trying to figure out still the basics i myself get lost one thing it, i will just ask again is where do you store your nfts now these mm-hmm. can become extreme value right there can be nfts which can be valued like 69 million dollars where do you store them in so NFTs what? in yeah. yeah, so NFTs and cryptocurrency is is technically it's all stored on the blockchain, but you yes. need a, a, a digital wallet to communicate with these, right? So that's what we use MetaMask for. So the MetaMask unlocks your set of what you own and allows you to take them across wherever you want. So technically, so we can say that we store them in MetaMask or a digital wallet. So if I buy that sixty nine million dollar of painting. And I had to store it on MetaMask. Can I not give it to a regulated custodial? Not yet because the space is so new, but definitely there will be custodial services for art. There has to be. Eventually yeah. they'll be coming up. Yeah. yeah, it looks like that's that's an interesting thing. We are looking at that space as well, we, being our own custodial and trying to bring it to the masses. So that is an interesting space to watch out for as well. E- enable everyone to hold easily some of the NFTs. So that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. I, I do remember, I think I went, uh, I had my first NFT gifted to me. It mm-hmm. was a special event token. I went to Japan for an event and they said, hey, do you have this wallet? I said, no, I can download it now. He said, download and I'll give you an NFT and you will always remember that you came to this event. I didn't understand that time. I said, fine, for fun's sake, I'm standing here and okay, fine. But when you can have a t-shirt in that, in that event, I can also have an NFT token. So I, I do think that I will have it somewhere, but yeah. Is that, that was that good. from the proof of attendance protocol, POAP? P-O-A-P? Yes, P-O-A-P. It, they also gave you a badge. It was in, in, in Japan for DevCon. So Yeah, yeah. so they, they're integrated with Decentraland. So when you go to Decentraland in the events, you can get a POP. So every time you go to these events, you can you can collect these NFTs. So one year, two years down the track, you can see who went to these events. And we use a proof of attendance protocol. So that's yeah, very it, cool. 2019, 20 was washed out. So 2019 con in Japan, that was, that was good. And and I think it was in one, one of my Coinbase's wallet. Coinbase actually mm. took a, acquired the Toshi wallet, if you remember, yeah, which Toshi. is their, yeah, which were, which is their, which their non-custodial wallet. Mm. So that's the one which I downloaded and I, I'm sure I have it in my Coinbase uh, Toshi wallet. Well, I'm still dabbling with this space. I've not had a chance to, to, to invest yet, but I can proudly say I do own one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Let's start, you know, that's how you learn. Yeah, it's a start, but yeah, I would like to, I would like to see how ICC comes out with something interesting. Yeah. I we, think uh, we, for ICC, I'm, I'm talking to them and I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, a good strategy would be to get like actors and all that to talk about it. I think it'll, it'll blow up. 
you know, someone like Shah Rukh Khan, or they, they, they already own some teams. So, yeah. The big yeah, it, it, it'll be, actually, it'll be multiplication effect, right? The, the cricket and Bollywood and NFTs, wow. Wow, exactly. now we're talking. Now we're there talking very, yeah, yeah. Look, that's one side. The other side is India has such a huge potential in terms of creating this digital art and innovating on top of it, building solutions around it. So guys, get involved. There is, like we say, we've been saying now for a week, money is everywhere. You you can be an investor, you can be a builder, you can be a project owner, you can be a developer, you can be an artist. So mm -hmm. this space has plenty of potential. So get involved. Follow us, follow Matty, and just have a have a good time building and creating future from here. You will be proudly showing off your collections someday to, to your friends on your phone or sitting with uh, with your family and showing you, hey, this is the piece which I own. This is the sun, sunset I captured and then I own it. Or this is the sunset somebody else captured, but I owned it. And I was mm. I was the early guys to understand this stuff. Mm. So yeah, very nice. Awesome. Good. Thanks, Barry. It was lovely talking to you. No, and... thank you for having me, Nitin. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Great. Thank you.